Hello, and welcome to another episode of the BIM 360 Success. I'm David Campbell, and I've brought along with me fellow BIM enthusiast and BIM 360 expert, uh, Joey Whitney. Hey. Well, thanks, David, for the introduction. Uh, with that, I want to kind of recap this uh, second se second episode in the series, kind of like what you did with the first one. So those of you that are uh, have already watched the first one, you know, you can uh, skip this part if you want or just stay tuned. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, this is an overview of BIM 360 before we kind of get into the various uh, administration modules. So with BIM 360, um, as I stated in the previous uh, episode, uh, it is a single source of truth, uh, common data environment, file repository, whatever. What, pick your your, uh, your your term, phrase, whatever. But essentially, it's a container that houses all of your files and documents, models. Think about any any file format that you want, essentially, lives in this container. And that container lives on a set of APIs called Forge. Forge allows us to push and pull data, that sort of stuff. We can uh, interact with other softwares, ERPs, all that sort of stuff, but it happens all through Forge. On top of the document management um, uh, module, which sits on top of Forge, that again, that common data environment, that container for all the files, um, are a series of modules. And Dave and I are going to cover each one of those modules um, throughout the this this um, uh, webcast. But we are going to start today with account administration and uh, project administration. Let me share my screen. Um, so before I jump into this, um, uh, you know, the overview, I really wanted to highlight a few things here. So uh, some of our colleagues at uh, TopCon Solutions have put together this awesome guide. And, you know, pay no attention to the title. This is BIM 360 Design Guide. But really, this first few uh, set of uh, chapters, if you will, are actually all about setting up BIM 360 in general. So it's about um, going into, you know, your Autodesk uh, you know, skip that part, obviously, but going into your BIM 360 account, um, activating it, setting up your users, um, you know, creating a project from scratch, all that sort of stuff. It all happens um, inside of the account admin page, and it all starts with this guy. This guy's going to walk you through every one of those. So with that, let me pull up my page. So on our previous episode, um, David mentioned this kind of changing your account um, model, you know, account selector up here and underneath there are just various projects. So you can pull this up for any account that you're an admin on and actually, um, you know, change the projects and, and, you know, change roles and all kinds of sort of stuff as long as you're an admin on that project. So we're going to start today with our account, right? Topcon Solutions, Inc. Um, you know, you're not selecting a project. Again, this is for the whole entire account, not for individual projects. But this is where we would create projects, right? So David's going to talk about the project admin piece. But before he can talk about project administration, we would have to create a project and assign a project administrator and uh, at the very least the document management uh, services. From there, he can turn on any services he wants and, and set it up. Um, but at the very least, the account admin has to create the project and assign uh, a project administrator for the document management component. Um, as you can see, these are my various uh, projects. They uh, um, all live here in the cloud. Um, and then I have all my members, uh, you know, that I've ever put inside of here. Again, you know, we can filter this by company, by role, by username, all that sort of stuff. And we can do things like bulk upload. Um, again, this is your, think of it as your uh, database of contacts, right? So if I ever wanted to know Tom's um, uh, contact information, you know, I'd get his telephone number, his address, find out more information about him, figure out what projects he's on. It would all happen here in the account admin piece. Uh, furthermore, I have the same functionality, but for my company. So I could get, uh, say, I've got Autodesk in here and I've got uh, their company telephone number. Maybe I've got this tied back to my ERP and I've got their information, tax ID, all that sort of stuff. All lives in here. I can see what projects they're on, just like the members. It would actually tell me how many members from their company are on my projects. And then um, roles. So roles are kind of a, a great way to standardize things. So when you assign somebody to your, comp to your project, you're assigning a role. 
you know, whether that's BIM manager, document manager, whatever it is, but you can further tweak those roles. And again, you can add permissions to the person uh, that go uh, above and beyond what the roles give. You can create new roles, um, you know, if you're not seeing anything that you like in here and using that to kind of template and assign. Um, this is my favorite page. David, I've mentioned this to you before, but I really like this just because I love dashboards. I love graphics. Mm -hmm. um, I love analytics. And this, you know, even though it's something as basic as your account overview, essentially, you know, when does your seats expire? How many licenses you have available? Um, you know, projects, all that sort of stuff. You know, what's been assigned, what hasn't been assigned. Um, it's very basic, but at the same time, I just love how simplistic it looks. I think it's a great way to get a snapshot of your current usage. Um, settings. Uh, this is a very important one, especially as you add services to your BIM 360 account. So these are the various uh, account admins. You might have five, you might have 10, you might have more. Uh, it's important to note account admins do not take up a, a license um, because they're not actually in the project. They are your managers of the project or of, of the uh, account. So think of your IT admin essentially, you know, um, being an account admin, but not necessarily being a user, so they wouldn't take up a license unless they were added to a project. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to click this, but this is a very uh, key piece of information right here, this view account ID. So if you add services later on, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to need to give this account ID to your reseller. Hopefully it's TopCon Solutions, um, and they would be able to add services uh, to that account ID so that way all of those licenses show up here in this portal and they're attached to your appropriate company. Now that's your company, right? But underneath your company, you can have multiple departments. So you can add uh, different units to your to your business, very various departments. Um, one of my favorite things here, uh, custom integrations. So we, you know, we've got one for BIN 360 file sharing activated, but you can add other custom integrations, stuff that lives in Forge but doesn't doesn't necessarily have um, you know, a fully built out app into the BIM 360 network itself. And I'll show you that in just a second. And another great tool here is you can actually get an activity log. Uh, your account admins are done. Um, so this is my second favorite piece. Uh, doesn't have quite the dashboard overview that the uh, analytics tab did, but this is where you get to push and pull data and tie into existing systems. So you'll notice here there's quite a few other applications already available. Some of my favorites uh, tying into, you know, Bluebeam, uh, David Yars's BuilderBox, um, and then obviously we've got Magnet Enterprise to connect to our um, TopCon Total Station um, uh, cloud application. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, those allow us to kind of push and <coughs> push and pull data between applications. So not everything has to live here. Um, you know, maybe you're working in another application, but you're collaborating with somebody in this. You can actually connect your field personnel to your, your office personnel just by uh, uh, activating one of these um, applications. And these applications don't cost any money. If you already have access to them, so you're already a subscriber to Bluebeam Studio Prime, you don't pay anything for the integration. The integration's already there. Um, you just simply activate it in here and then, um, you know, connect your accounts essentially with your, your uh, various IDs and roles. Mm -hmm. um, so with hey, Joe, that, speaking of uh, connecting everything before we before we push on, could you go back to that members tab? I did want to talk about um, another kind of thing. So we talked about, you know, the ad tool there with bulk um, adding members. But if you could click on that as well. Um, awesome. So you'll see that under the ad, this is where you can actually start kind of specifying what people and kind of what roles, um, not not just in, in the role of, in terms of document management or what, what have you, but actual account admins. This is how you can invite other account admins into your project. This is how you can invite regular members and users who are going to be using it or executives, maybe an owner that wants to keep an idea or keep a visual on what's going on with the, with the project, like that uh, analytics dashboard there. Maybe they wanted to see something like that. They don't need to get in um, fully in, in terms and see everything that's going on and know every time a new package is created, right? But uh, they'd like to get an idea of what's going on. And that import members by spreadsheet there, it's fantastic, as Joey said earlier, for bulk uploading members. Just download the template, like it's an Excel spreadsheet. You can copy and paste or kind of bring in all of your members there and then just upload them in. It's a very nice, uh, very nice way to do it. Yeah, so if you have an existing database or repository for uh, contacts, maybe you're using a uh, bid tracking software um, that has all of your contacts in there already, this would be a great tool for you to actually go ahead and 
um, you know, customize some Excel spreadsheets, do a quick Im import. Uh, it's actually great, especially if you've got say 100, 200, 300,000, 2,000 people, whatever it is um, to invite to this. And it's important <coughs> to note, this member directory is not actually taking up a license. These are, this is again, just a database. I can invite 10,000 people into this database um, but uh, they don't get assigned a license until I add them to a project. Uh, and then from there, they'll actually be taking up a license. But yeah, yeah, that's a, a great piece of information to note. Um, so with that though, I just wanna go back to projects real quick. Um, again, so this is where you set up projects. You can actually get, um, you know, last signed in projects. You can, you know, filter and sort by projects. But I think this is probably a great time uh, to turn this over to David Campbell because he is gonna dive into what a project administrator does. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the project admin side of things. So we'll start with, well, going off from the um, account admin and the members portal here. So the account admin, like Joey said, is, is kind of like that repository, it's that database. So you're going to invite all of the members that you want to collaborate with as well as um, internal members to pull in and, and collaborate with on this uh, on these different projects, right? So with that, you're going to pull from that database here. So I'm going to add in my project members who are explicitly involved in this this project here and kind of grant them access to the different modules of BIM 360 as needed per project. So you remember uh, from last episode, we talked about, you know, each project is different based off of, what, um, you know, based off of, uh, I guess, what it needs. And um, you activate those services kind of as an on need basis. Well, you have people to kind of administer those different um, modules, kind of what have you, as they are needed, right? So we'll see here that when you bring in the account admin, so I bring in a member, they have this default role, the contractor, project manager, uh, civil engineer, kind of what have you. Um, <clears throat> they're going to have some default permissions that they'll come in with, whether they are a member or the project administrator. So you can go through and again, uh, kind of adjust those permissions, uh, allowing them access or allowing them to control what's going on in that module. With your companies, this again is pulling from that project, um, I mean account, excuse me, account administrator database there. So you're going to pull for this specific project, whatever companies that you're working with. OK, and when you tie the individuals in, so you bring those members in, it does ask what company they are with. So it does tie them to that company. Now that's very important as we get going um, throughout more of BIM 360 and tying all these modules together, right? In terms of tracking and analytics, collecting that data, knowing who you're working with, knowing what happened during these different projects. Um, so that's a very important kind of thing that we're doing here. It's, it's great. Um, if I go over into services, this is where the project administrator specifies the services of the project that they're going to use. So. Here's is also kind of where you'll need to go. This will happen uh, as soon as you guys create this project. This is going to be one of the first things that you do. OK, you're going to come in and then activate document management after you bring in your companies. You're going to you're going to this document management again, as we kind of said earlier, is where it all begins. It's where it all starts. So we're going to build off of docs. This is where you'll assign in any of your other project uh, administrators that you want to allow into this specific project. Um, for document management. Now, Joey and I will go into this deeper, but copy project settings, okay? This, um, we've kind of talked about it before, but templatizing your projects, right? And getting everything ready to, to where it's just a nice, simple, select this project, move forward. We were already, we have a good starting point in terms of what project files or plan files that we're gonna use. We will cover that a little bit deeper when we get into document management in the next episode. So under project admin, cost, design, it's all the same thing. You'll activate, again, those admins per that kind of project needed basis. Now, I do want to um, I'll, I'll kind of mention the profile. This is kind of as the uh, account admin specifies when they create this profile, this project itself. This is where all that information is going to come in in terms of um, this is a training project, it's new construction, kind of what have you. You can edit this information. The reason why I wanted to show you guys this one real quick is because this is where you go to specify whether this project is active, it's inactive, or it's been archived. Okay, so this is where the project admin would want to go when we finish this project up and we're, we're handing it over, we're going to archive it, right? So 
I'll switch back into services here because I did want to talk about the left hand kind of portion of this module with overview and then issues. If I go into issues, this is where you're going to start to see the capability to specify the different members like permissions that are using these issues. So whether we have full control of adding these issues, um, you have like a read, read, write, or create, view and create, and then full control. There it is. Create, view and create, full control. So also we have the types of issues. So you'll see a lot of locks off of these. These are kind of out of the box there, whether it's commissioning, coordination, design, and you can utilize those or create your own issue types. OK. Now again, uh, just because it's the, the BIM guy in me, I, I like to think about how all of this is tying together. When you have your different types, you have your root causes of issues. Um, you can start pulling all of this information together to really analyze what's going on in your projects and how to improve. So this is very awesome kind of capability that we have here in, in the project admin as well. This is where you can create that new category for those root causes and then any custom attributes that you guys want to um, kind of push into those issues themselves. The locations. So if I go into locations here, this is to actually attribute any um, issues to locations that are known within the document itself. So what you'll do is you'll download a uh, template here. It comes into a CSV file. If I bring it up, it looks something like this here where you have your different tiers. It does have some good information here in terms of um, what to input, what to use, whether you want to use the four tier outline, the three tier, um, the path example with the three tier there, um, or if you want to use maybe just a two tier or an empty template that you guys can actually populate however you need to. OK, so that's nice. You can load that in and then utilize these locations as you're adding issues. You specify the location and then you can link a document to it as well. So under document management, this is where you're going to go into um, in, in terms of uh, it, it's I'm sorry. It's a nice little database that we can get into here for printing out our activity. You can export all of the activity happening within the project, um, go into some advanced settings in terms of sharing public links for it, showing the folder path, um, the mo uh, mobile security key. If, and if you want anybody to utilize this on a mobile device, you can apply a security key there. Um, the review workflows, if you want to create a review workflow for RFIs, for design um, approval, anything like that, this is where you can go to create that workflow. Um, specify what type of workflow, whether it's one step, two step, three step, and then again, who's involved and, and what that process looks like. The Revit cloud model upgrade. This one is great um, for, as you guys kind of guessed, bringing all of those models up to the newest edition. So it'll actually do it one year at a time. So if you go in 2018, you go into 2019, and then you go from 2019 to 2020 if that's where you choose to go. So you upgrade it every year. Now, an interesting tip on that as well is let's say that you're, you know, you started this project in 2018 and it's moved into 2019 or let's say 2020, 2019 into 2020, right? If uh, you uploaded a 2019 model into that folder and then say opened and upload a, um, a 2020 model into that folder, the document management folder will recognize the 2019 version of Revit um, kind of as the parent kind of, I want to say version for that folder. So if you go into 2020 and you try to find that model, you're not going to be able to just because it's not recognizing it, right? If you do the Revit cloud model upgrade, you upgrade that entire folder at one time, every document, every model, I'm sorry, every model that's in there, you can upgrade that into the newest version and then you'll find it. Okay, so that's a good tip there. For project management, this is where we're going to go into setting up our um, the workflows for the RFIs and submittals. OK, so we'll see the RFI process there here. We can change that workflow in terms of who the creator is, who's the manager, the, who's the reviewer. Um, and then same kind of thing with the submittals. Here we can go in terms of who the manager who um, wants to submit these packages for review and who closes them. If I go into cost management, Cost management is where you're going to see that uh, you can bring in a lot of your general settings for your units of measure, whether you're using cubic feet, cubic inches, yards, that kind of stuff. Um, your budget code setup in terms of any segments or different 
uh, codes that you guys have. Or if you have a template, actually build a template here and utilize that. Any custom attributes that you guys want to utilize, whether it's the main contract, the budget itself, a cost payment application, uh, your document templates, again, the contract, any PCOs, RFQs, uh, different permissions for utilizing the um, cost management, utilizing the different applications there, and then again, an activity report. If I go into design collaboration, this is where you'll need to go to build out your design teams. So this again is is kind of built off of docs, right? You're going to have to create your folders inside of document management to host your design teams and their different models, the links, things like that. So this is where you'll go to create those teams and manage your models. Well, this is taking a drink. OK, so the model coordination. This is where you'll go if you're using the model coordination model module <laughs> model module the coordination module okay this is where you'll go to create your coordination spaces so to enable coordination kind of coordination within um, document management uh, you'll create these team spaces excuse me coordination spaces and then allow clash detection that's going to happen kind of automatically in these coordination spaces okay and then finally for field management Field management is um, where you're going to see the capability to specify the permissions of whether users can use, or they can edit your checklist, things like that. And then under daily logs, this is where you can actually assign your workflow permissions in terms of adding um, people into it, saying they're a manager, or they can just um, view the logs in these in these projects. Okay, whether they can create them and edit, or they're just viewing it. All right. Now I think. That was everything. Um, I'm looking forward to episode three in this series. I think we're going to go ahead and cover document management. So we're going to do a deep dive right into the document management portion of BIM 360. So again, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time.